on this last day of our story together. And the last day that we together are sharing and studying the story together. We get to focus on two of the best known parables Jesus told. And they're both about the overwhelming and outrageous love of God shown in Jesus for you and for me and for all people. The first one, as we heard Jim, he went that way, Jim read, is the parable of the Good Samaritan. It's a tough parable. It's a tough and demanding parable. Because it ends with the words, go and do likewise. Stop being like the priest. Stop being like the Levite. And start being like the Good Samaritan. Stop being like all those good church-going religious types who can't see that there are hurting people all around them and right in front of them. Stop being like them and start being like the Samaritan who actually showed compassion and mercy. Stop making excuses now. <laughs> Go and do likewise. And to that I want to say, oh boy, <laughs> because I don't know about you, but when I hear those words and read those words, I begin to feel pretty guilty. Because truth be told, I'm often much more like the priest and much more like the Levite than I am like the Good Samaritan. Which probably means I need to hear this. But as I said a moment ago, this parable is also about Jesus' overwhelming love. And here's what I mean. The man who was talking with Jesus had two questions to ask of Jesus. Yes, he asked, who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered that, twisted it around, and basically said, here's what it means to be a neighbor. But he also asked a first question. And the first question was, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And I think that the parable of the Good Samaritan answers the first question first. And then answers the second. But we've got to take them in order. In order to make the most sense out of this. In asking the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The man was looking for the good, meaningful, and abundant, fulfilling life. He wanted a life that was satisfying. He wanted life with God. He wanted to know what he had to do to get out of the ditches of his own brokenness and his own separation. He wanted to know what he should do to pull himself up out of the brokenness of the world and the brokenness of his life. And the answer came in the story. And to understand it, I think a key to understanding that this is about Jesus' overwhelming, radical, amazing love is to see ourselves as that person who is in the ditch and bleeding and hurting and bruised we are the ones who are down and out. We can't get out of the ditch. We can't save ourselves. We've got to wait for the Good Samaritan. We've got to wait for the Messiah. We've got to wait for Jesus. It's not what must I do here, but it's what Jesus and only Jesus can do, has done will do. The good news for you and me today is that though you and I are wounded, and we are, and in the ditch of sin, though we are broken by the pain of life, Jesus comes to us. And if we would but admit that we need the good Samaritan, 
He would come and carry us. Carry us out of our ditch. He'll take us on that same back. His same back. That bore the cross. And He'll carry us to the light. To the brightness. To the glory of living with Him and for Him forever. Beginning right now. Jesus has come because we cannot pull ourselves out of the brokenness of the bondage of sin which engulfs us each day. We cannot save ourselves no matter how much we try, but Jesus can. Maybe you're feeling like you're down in the ditch right now. Maybe you're bruised hurting and bleeding. Maybe you feel like you just can't make it anymore. Is that you or has that been you? Have hope. Have hope and and, and open your eyes and behold the glory and the presence of the good Samaritan, Jesus. Jesus who has come to lift you and to heal you and to restore you to wholeness. Now that is love. That is the abundant, overwhelming love of God in Jesus. The second parable. And again, both of these are really well known. The second parable is also about that abundant, overwhelming love of God in Jesus. We call this one the parable of the prodigal son. I pointed this out before because I think it's a key to unlocking a greater meaning to it. But it bears repeating and remembering. We usually mean wayward, wandering, or lost when we use the word prodigal. You know, the prodigal son the wayward son, the wandering son, the lost son. But once again, I invite you to open a dictionary someday and look at the word prodigal. The word prodigal, another definition for the word prodigal, is recklessly extravagant. Recklessly extravagant. Extravagant. And I think that this story is the story of the father who is recklessly extravagant, who is lavishly extravagant. It's the father who is prodigal in this sense when he actually gives his son his portion of the inheritance before he died. It's the father who is prodigal recklessly extravagant, lavishly extravagant, when he is waiting and watching and welcoming. And it is the father who is prodigal as he throws a party for his son who once was lost but now is found. In the telling of this story, I believe Jesus is telling us that his mission, God's mission, is to, here's the word, prodigiously, (laughs) I challenge you to use that word in your vocabulary this next week. But God's mission is to prodigiously look for and seek out and welcome people who have wandered and who are lost. It is Jesus' mission to do so with reckless extravagance prodigiously which is good news it's good news for anyone any one of us who has ever wandered off to a distant country a distant country in this sense is at least what I'm talking about is where we are when we think we know better than God, what's good for us? A distant country is where we are when 
We have no time for God. Oh, goodness sakes, we are busy people. A distant country is where we are when we as prodigals in the traditional sense of the word pursue what we once thought was the good life. But perhaps know that it's not. And perhaps about which we feel some sense of embarrassment or shame. I think we've been there. I think we've all been there. I've been to a distant country. But the good news is that the Father is prodigal. The Father is prodigious. The Father lives and acts prodigiously. The recklessly extravagant Father waits and watches and welcomes. He waits. And as he does so, his heart yearns for us to return. He waits, and as he does so, he's wooing us all the time, stirring in our hearts and minds. He waits for us to come to our senses and to remember. He welcomes. You see, he's not only watching in a passive way, like, oh, maybe he's coming but he watches in an active, proactive type of way, yearning and watching, waiting and watching for you. These stories Jesus told are about God's outrageous and overwhelming love for you. And having experienced that love, we are called to love. We are called to love, to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we are called to love others. And as I have shared for most of my years with you, we are called to love God whom we cannot see by loving and serving people all around us whom we can see. So church, Here's my question as we go our different ways. Do you love Jesus? That's not a rhetorical question. Church, do you love Jesus? Yes. And will you love Jesus more day by day? by loving people more, day by day. Will you love Jesus more, by loving people more, day by day? And your answer would be, yes. I'm going to (laughs) try. Den with a song that asks that question. Will you love Jesus more? <laughs> I felt quite sure If I did my best I could maybe impress you With tender words And a harmony A clever rhyme or two But if all I've done In the time we've shared Is turn your eyes on me Then I fail that what I've been called to do There's someone else I want you to see Will you love Jesus more 
When we go our different ways When this moment is a memory Will you remember His face? Will you look back and realize You sensed His love more than you had before? I pray for nothing less than for you to love Jesus more. I'd like to keep these memories in frames of gold and silver and reminisce a year from now about the smiles we've shared but above all else i hope you have come to know the father's love and when you see the lord face to face you'll hear him say well done Will you love Jesus more when we go our different ways? When this moment is a memory, will you remember His face? Will you look back and realize you sensed His love? more than you did before i pray for nothing less than for you to love jesus more will you love jesus more when we go our different ways when this moment is a memory will you remember his face will you look back and realize you sensed his love more than you did before i pray for nothing less than for you to love Jesus more. I pray for nothing less than for you to love Jesus more.